Today, I have another solo episode for you. There's a lot to talk about now, isn't there? We are seemingly at the end of the UAW strike, but are we really? I heard today that some of the members are not ratifying the agreement, so we'll see where we go from here. As you know, I took a turn from our normal cadence, if you will, of podcast episode production. Normally, I produce a longer form interview type format with a guest and occasionally a solo episode. And when the strike started, I took a a turn and focused more on strike related content because I know that's what you, my beloved audience of the Automotive Leaders podcast, that's what you wanted and needed. And I published a series of shorter episodes, some solo episodes and some interviewing some key providers, some key people that would have something to contribute to what we needed as we started to go through the strike activity. And if you remember, I recorded an episode the very first day of the strike with Tor Huff and Sig Huber at Elm Analytics on risk management. And then I had an episode with Thomas Kowal, president of Saraf, and then Dan Russman over at Budsell. So we had a a lot of great input from these guests that I I believe helped everybody. Uh, Everybody got a little something, a little nugget out of each one of those episodes. And I received so much positive feedback. And thank you so much. I was at the MIMA conference last week and everybody talked about how much they loved the strike-related episodes. So that started me thinking about the length of my episodes and I received some feedback that you like the shorter episodes, keeping it round about the 30-minute mark. And so I'm thinking about doing that for season five. So this episode brings to a close the strike-related episodes for now, and I want to talk about a few things that have happened over the last few weeks, and that was, let's go back to the MIMA conference. What a great conference that was, and I'll tell you why for a couple of reasons. First of all, I liked the two-day format. It wasn't too long, um, and it didn't feel like you had to condense everything into one day, but I liked the exhibit space. Just being able to meander around and talk to different people and talk to the exhibitors, I thought was really helpful. And uh, of course, there was that moment with the keynote, Stephen Covey, who, as you know, I recorded an interview with Stephen quite some time ago on this podcast, right before he was due to release his new book, Trust and Inspire. Now, that book is all about switching from command and control the leadership model that we know and love, hopefully not that much (laughs) anymore in the auto industry, to trust and inspire, which is very much along the lines of authentic leadership. And that's what I'm all about. It's about changing the culture in the automotive industry so that we adopt a more collaborative, a more authentic leadership style. Well, Stephen was the keynote at MIMA. And I'm sitting in the audience front row because I had to be there to support my guy. I I just admire him tremendously. The books that he's written and the way that he thinks, and quite frankly, the human being that he is. And as he's going through his keynote, he shouts out, maybe not shouts, but he mentions, he says, and I did this great podcast episode with Jan Griffiths at Gravitas Leadership. Well, I was shocked and the texts started coming. Did he really, did he really mention you from the stage? Yes, he did. I'm taking that as a huge high point in my career that Stephen Covey, first of all, remembered me, but also took the time to call out the podcast and his time with me uh, during the keynote. That's the kind of guy that he is, you know. He had nothing to gain by doing that. He really didn't. He did it because he recognized that he was in an audience full of automotive leaders and he knows that that's my jam, that's my thing, I'm all about automotive leadership. And he was so gracious after the, um, the keynote and we talked for a little while and his, also his co-author of the book, uh, David Kasperson, who is an awesome guy. If you don't No, if you're not connected to either one of these guys on LinkedIn, I really encourage you to do so. And if you haven't read the book yet, Trust and Inspire, you need to. But read the book 
and listen to my podcast interview with Stephen. Yeah, kind of at the same time. Because I, when I interviewed Stephen, I interviewed him through the lens of the automotive industry. Because as you know, his experience expands much broader than automotive. And I wanted to target him specifically on automotive. So that was the MEMA conference. And if that wasn't enough excitement last week, then I went to the Reuters conference in Detroit on Wednesday. And I had the opportunity to introduce and bring on stage Marcus McCammon and do a fireside chat with Marcus. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell, it should, and it most definitely will in the future. Marcus is the president of Karma Automotive. Now, if you remember, several years ago, we had Fisca Karma. Well, they're two entirely different companies now. Karma Automotive is completely separate. And Marcus is their president. And what an awesome leader he is. I uh, took some time to research him and to have a prep call with him before the Reuters conference to understand more about him. And this man is all about authentic leadership. He's all about collaboration and the brand fits the mission. And you, I mean, you just don't see that too often, particularly not in automotive. So this past weekend, he unveiled their first product, their first EV. He's targeting the luxury market. It's not for everybody. He's very clear, very specific, and very targeted. And they unveiled their uh, new product in Vegas this weekend. And I'll drop a link into the show notes so you can see what this product looks like. And it's absolutely beautiful. I would love to have one. I don't think I can afford one quite yet, but take a look at it and see what you think. Now, what also struck me about Marcus was, and you'll, you'll see it in the YouTube video, his head of design is a woman, Michelle Christensen. And the way that he introduces her to do the walk around the vehicle and talk about the features and the design process of the vehicle speaks volumes for his commitment to her, to DE&I in the automotive workplace. And you'll hear him several times. He will talk about, and actually she does too. She talks about and recognizes the collaborative effort of the team. I mean, okay, so everybody says that when they're introducing a product or they're talking about their company, but you can tell the people that just say it and the people that mean it. And these two, Michelle and Marcus, oh, they mean it. And there's a lot more to come from Marcus McCammon on this podcast in the future. Okay, it might be setting you up for a little teaser there. So in this episode, I am bringing season four to a close. It's been a tremendous season and quite honestly, one of the highlights for me this past season was reaching the 100th episode. That's a huge milestone in podcasting, in the world of podcasting. Most podcasts fail before they hit the 10th episode. And why is that, you might wonder? Well, it's because it's an incredible amount of work. If you want to do it right, it is. But I love it. I love the fact that this is a mission-driven podcast. It's all about sharing stories of authentic leadership to my audience. And I love podcasting, and I love combining the two together. Now, for my 100th episode, John McElroy, And Jason Stein joined me at the mic for that episode. And again, similar comments to the comments I had about Stephen Covey. These guys, both John and Jason, had absolutely nothing to gain by being on my podcast. They did it because they truly supported me and the mission. I mean, graciousness beyond anything I could have ever expected. So huge shout out to John McElroy and Jason Stein for supporting me with that 100th episode. And to you, my beloved audience, for sharing the, the word, sharing the podcast with your colleagues. Our listenership is, is growing. So we are going to take a short break. I'm going to bring season four to a close. Season five will start in the not too distant future. You'll hear the season five episode will kick off on November 30th. And in the meantime, please take a moment to go into the back catalog. We're up to over 109 episodes right now. 
And then also check out the other podcast that I co-host and produce. And maybe some of you didn't know about this. It's called the Auto Supply Chain Profits Podcast. And I co-host and produce it for QAD and also for Quistem. And that podcast, again, is mission-driven and it is focused on automotive supply chain. We want to bring to you guests that contribute to the automotive supply chain mission for the future. What are some of the things that you need to know? We just released an episode with Anthony Emery from Finia, which um, is sort of near and dear to my heart because of the Borgwana connection. And most of, as most of you know, that's where I started my career. But Anthony, you know, again, this DE&I theme, boy, his commitment to DE&I is palpable. And the way that he thinks about supply chain, you want to take a listen to that episode. And then another recent episode with Auto Supply Chain Profits was Thomas Kuhl. Thomas is a professor at Arizona State University. And what he's doing to prepare students for supply chain, gamification, really? Imagine that. Are the days of the stand-up lecturer dead? Hmm, I don't know. Take a listen to that episode and you'll find out. And then on the business side, as if that's not enough, Yes, it's another new website for me. I can't even tell you how many website revisions I've gone through. This entrepreneurial journey, it really is that. It is a journey. And the business, Gravitas Detroit, has been in business five years, which again is another milestone. Uh, Most businesses fail within the first year. And then if you make it past the first year, another 50% fail within the first five years. So I'm still standing and I still absolutely love what I do. And many of you ask when I see you out there at these uh, conferences, would I ever consider going back to the corporate world? And the answer is no. And I feel a little like tension when I say that because after being in the corporate world for so long, that's so so hard to say that, right? But I just love what I'm doing. So I'm going to keep doing it. And in this new website, you will see my focus is going to be in three major areas. One of them has, and this has evolved over the last couple of years, is doing off-site workshops for companies. I don't know about you, but when I was in my corporate job, I always wanted to get my team together, but oh, the thought of the preparation and the design of the agenda and making sure everybody got the most out of it and picking the right location. And then doing the notes at the end of it. Remember that? Remember how awful that was to copy all those flip charts down? Well, I've developed a process to do all of that. And I'm providing that mostly to my tier one clients. And then the second focus you'll see for me is, of course, keynote speaking. You know, I absolutely love to do that. So whether it's a private event, whether it's just a part of your offsite meeting, your leadership meeting, a startup for the beginning of the year for 2024, whatever it is. So that's another part of the work that I absolutely love to do. And then um, later this year, we have two tier ones coming online with internal podcasts. And I couldn't be more excited about that. So your own company podcast, think of it as like your own radio station. And I'm going to be co-host and uh, co-hosting and producing that for two tier ones. So we get a lot going on. Season four officially closes right now, and we'll start with season five. I'm going to take a step back, as I always do when I close each season, to make sure that I'm providing content that is meaningful to you. So please drop me a line and let me know, do you agree with my approach with shortening the episodes down to around about 30 minutes? Is there a different format? Are there certain questions that you want me to ask key leaders? Are there leaders that you want me to have on the show? Now, don't all rush at once because honestly, I am inundated with emails from PR companies that want to get their person on the podcast and I will not do it unless I know the person or somebody I know knows the person and they have the reputation of being an authentic leader. Otherwise, I'm not going to interview them. I don't want them on the podcast. So let me know what you think. A couple of other things. Boy, I guess there's a lot going on in Gravitas Detroit land, more than I thought. The book's coming out. Yes, you've asked me about the book, and I 
started to work on it at the beginning of the year. And then to be perfectly honest, I get a little bit distracted. Now, one of the things you'll know about me is I don't pretend to have the skill sets to do absolutely everything uh, in my business. I don't. I'm not good at detailed work. You'll see that farmed out really fast. And I'm also not good at writing. I'm great at talking, audio, visual, getting on stage, love all that, love podcasting. But for me to write something, oh gosh, please no. So this I know about myself and I have no problem in bringing on board the people who have the skill set that I don't have. And so I have employed a ghostwriter and uh, she's almost done with it. So I'm very excited to get the book launched. We are targeting to have it launched before the end of the year so that you can buy it for Christmas. And if not, then um, you'll have it ready for the start of the year. You can share it with your team. It's a little bit about my background, but it's really focused on some key episodes in the podcast. It'll be a summary. Each chapter will be a summary of some of the key episodes with a call to action at the end of each chapter, things that you can glean from that particular podcast interview and talk to your teams about. And then in 2024, we are opening the Automotive Leaders podcast up for sponsors. If you are a company that wants to reach the audience, and again, our audience is typically leaders in the automotive industry, if you want to reach that audience, and if your company mission is aligned with mine, meaning you want to help prepare this industry for the future as we go through this period of massive transformation, if you believe in authentic leadership, then you might be a good sponsor for this podcast. If not, then just don't bother. <laughs> Sorry, I know that sounds a bit cold, but hey, I funded this by myself so far and I'm going to continue doing it um, until we align ourselves with the right sponsors. So with that, stay strong. We'll get through this strike. We're all in startup mode. We're, we're getting through it. Yes, I know that there's some pain out there. If there is anything that I can do to support you, reach out. I'm here. Stay strong. Be your 100% authentic leadership self and lead with gravitas, the hallmark of authentic leadership. I will see you back for season five, November 30th.